I think when you're in the military, it's, it's hard to find time to grieve, you know, especially when you're leading, you, you always have to make sure that you're taking care of your guys. And at the same time, you're, you're trying to help each other. So you, you just bury so much as it happens. And so for the first couple years, I was really grieving. I was bartending, which was probably a horrible combination. And um, after that grieving process though, that's when I started to see that I had these blocks that I could work with to build something healthy. My name's James Poling, I'm from Warren, Ohio. I joined the Army when I was 17 and spent a little over eight years in the 82nd Airborne Division. I did three years in Afghanistan with them as an infantry guy. When I got back, I moved to Cleveland, Ohio and had kind of a rough time reacclimating. And it, it took me a while to really kind of find that, uh, like that healthy path forward. But once I did, I was able to quickly recognize that the lessons in the military were helping me accomplish these in the civilian world. Um, and so now I run a nonprofit and uh, we try to share the idea of post-traumatic growth and the idea of if as a society we agree that there's growth opportunity and adversity, then there should be growth opportunity in addressing mental health. If we're going to continue to, to be uh, the type of individuals we want to be for the individuals we care about, you know, we have to make sure that we're continuing to evolve to fit that situation. And so that's why today I'm getting uh, the Roman god of transition, who's also the god of war and peace, tattooed on my left arm. When I was given the opportunity to come to New York and get a tattoo here at Inked, you know, my, my first thought was that I had not planned on getting another tattoo. I haven't had a tattoo in like 10 years. Uh, but then my second thought was like, that's cool as f and I need to go do that. Uh, my name is Nick Maddock, I'm a tattoo artist in New York City, and I'm working on James's piece today. So he asked me to design something based off of the Greek god Janus. He wanted the clean-shaven side looking towards almost the destruction of war, kind of representing the side of him as a soldier. And then he wanted the bearded side looking back at something more peaceful and serene almost more philosophical side. From what I understand, he, he's doing a lot of stuff with work with, work with veterans and, and touring and, and trying to help them get through some of the hardships they have um, post-service, coming home, working their way into, I guess, civilian society and not having that regiment that they're used to having and, you know, working their way through some of the, the trauma that they've seen. If it heals or, or helps him you know, post-service with what he's currently doing in life. I think that's just a great thing. So anything that means something to somebody is awesome to work on for me. So I spent three years in Afghanistan across three separate tours. I had a 16-month deployment, 12-month deployment, and eight-month deployment. I was there 2007, 8, 10, and 12. I think my last month or two in the military, I started to recognize that the transition was gonna be rough. You know, as everybody else is looking on to their next deployment, I'm looking at what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm no longer focused on, you know, things like training and understanding the landscape of where we're going. I'm focused on who am I gonna be after this. Uh, and that's when I, I realized that it was going to be challenging. The duration of the grieving period is what caught me off guard more than anything. You know, like when I, when I first got into it, I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be a rough couple weeks. Uh, but realistically, it was a rough couple years and it took quite a bit to come out of that. You now have this time to think about everything that you've been through. Think about the people you lost. Think about how you've changed, how you've seen other people change. Uh, and really for, my, for me, when I first got out, it was the first time I let myself grieve. When I first started working to put things back together, one of the first things I did was go to school. I signed up for a couple classes, and one of my first classes was an English class. The first assignment was a memoir. And so after talking to the teacher and making sure that she wasn't gonna like report me to anyone if I was honest in this memoir, uh, I really tried to sit down and be honest about you know, where I was, how I felt about things. And when I'd shared it with her, she asked if she could then share it with the veterans group on campus. Then that turned to them asking me to speak for Veterans Day. And then I started getting asked to speak for Memorial Day and then sit on panels. And it kind of grew organically to the point that uh, an individual named Dominic Farinacci, he was doing a music video, he was doing a Tom Waits cover, and he wanted to know what the returning experience was like for soldiers. 
And so I sat down with him and just asked him not to continue to drive only the post-traumatic stress awareness message because so often we see you know, the, the images of vets in the bathroom with a gun to their head. And it did serve a purpose, and I think it continues to serve a, serve, serve a purpose in terms of building awareness. Uh, but I think one of the unintended side effects of that is that it can then feel prescriptive. So I know when I got out and I was looking around for individuals with similar experiences to try and find my own path forward, I found a lot of that. And I wasn't finding the individuals that were getting out and finding success. Although I know they're there, I know where they are now, I know how to find them now, but at the time I didn't. And so I sat down with this musician, Dominic, to discuss um, you know, what I would hope that he would share in this video. That day he provided me final edit on the video. People kept coming around it and wanting to support it in a larger way, uh, financially, uh, as, as well as you know, with tangible assets. And so it grew into a show that we now have called Modern Warrior Live, where we've done over 100 shows around the country. The way we see vets returning from war portrayed in the media generally falls into three buckets. I think we see them portrayed as heroes, uh, and I think that's the easiest one for most of us to look at ourselves and say, okay, we're not that. So then the other two buckets I feel like I see a lot are the damaged bucket and then the liability bucket. And so I know for me there was a period of time where I was home in Cleveland and I was like, okay, am I, am I this, am I, am I more damaged? Am, am I a liability? Am I the guy people need to be worried about? It, it took me a while to realize the vast majority of us don't fall in any of those buckets. And so that's something that we wanted to make sure that, you know, in our messaging we're sharing the, the general experience for most individuals with that survived combat experience you know, doesn't fit that narrative. So how can we talk about it in a healthy way? How can individuals that aren't physically wounded, you know, because it, it does feel different to stand up with all your limbs and say like, hey, I'm still struggling with something from combat. And so I think that uh, we really hope to provide a, a platform where we can address that with people. And I think at the same time, you have to do it in a way that doesn't try to compromise anyone's self-image or their toughness. I think it, it makes perfect sense to look at yourself as a tough individual, but also understand that the people you care about require a little bit of evolution from you. And uh, so that's really what I hope that we can continue to share with our messaging. Um, and, and push back against that damaged and liability narrative. Our goal with Modern Warrior Live really is to reach out to veterans that might feel as though you know, they, they're not seeing themselves depicted, they're not hearing somebody with similar experiences share a story in a way that they feel that they can relate to it. And I think there's not much about my story that's unique, and I think that's why you know, through sharing my story and being a little self-critical, we're able to create something that individuals with similar experiences can look at and pull pieces from. And you know, when they come and they see the show with their family members, they then leave with a foundation to have these jumping points for conversations. They can point at something in the show, whether it's me talking about combat or whether it's me talking about being back home or deploying, and they can say, well, we saw this together, here's how that was different for me. At the same time, we like to have resources on site. We partner with the VA, we partner with community veteran services, we partner with organizations like Team Red, White and Blue. And so when people come out to the show, we can allow them to connect with people locally that are continuing to work in that space and that can connect them to that broader community that I was looking for for so long. I mean, anytime somebody sees a finished piece and, and they get really excited about it, especially if it's just the start of something larger. I actually really enjoy doing the piece. I think of all the Greek statues that I've done so far in my career, I think that might be the second Janus piece I've ever done. And, and it's a nice change of pace from a lot of the other Greek gods and goddesses that people usually ask for. So it's always a, a good time when I get to do something a little bit different. I think one of my favorite things about this tattoo is now for the rest of my life when I look at it, it reminds me of the necessity of that evolution. Um, so you know, even though I'm, I'm happy with who I am today and, and where I am, uh, it's going to be a reminder on me always to make sure that I don't let myself stay stuck. Mm -hmm.